I know the thumbnail says that this is a versus video, but I honestly feel that both these products can be used in two different situations instead of with two different people entirely. So if you would like to see my more detailed reviews about both these products, I will leave it down in the description below. So for now, let's jump into how these are built. This is the Aslan Kern XP10. Now I've had this for a little while now, in fact, maybe over a year and a half, maybe just about two years, but it's a neat little puck uh, if you can call it that because it's got everything you need in fact uh, it's got a whole bunch of tactile buttons on it uh, where you can control the uh, volume up and down the play pause uh, you can even sync uh, uh, two devices with this you have a micro USB-C charging port. You have a previous and next track button. You do have a power on and off slider as well as a lock setting so that you, if in case you don't want any buttons pressed, you can leave it on the lock section, which is what the old Sony Walkmans used to have, which was a hold or the iPod used to have a hold button. And then of course you do have a 3.5 mm jack for most IEMs or earphones. And there is also a balanced 2.5 mm output as well. So for those of you who do have IEMs with that connector, you can use this without a problem. And this also has a microphone on it next to the 3.5 mm. So if you are planning on taking any phone calls with this, you can use the microphone that's inbuilt in this. So uh, no doubt it would sound significantly better if the microphone was closer to your mouth rather than further away. Now this little Astral Kern does have a battery in it and uh, I found that it usually carries me for well over four hours. So usually I place this in my car uh, for wireless audio and I found that usually with the volume at about 80%, it carries me for easily four to five hours without a problem. Now, this would vary depending on what kind of codec you're sending to it, because if you're sending an SBC codec, you're sending smaller packets of data, so it should last you longer. Whereas if you are using the Aptex codec, it is sending a lot more data across, so it will consume more power. Moving on to the iFi Go Link. Now, this has no buttons, no battery, and no microphone. So, uh, it's it's fairly to the point. It's very straightforward uh, There because there are no buttons and any control. It's just a plug-and-play system now I like the fact that it's a beautiful metal finish. It is powder coated So it has a very luxurious feel to it. It does have a braided cable, uh, which is pretty tough uh, I've never really had any issues with it. It's it has gotten snagged a few times now and then but it's still holding up uh, even at the seams uh, it doesn't seem to be showing any signs of wear, even though I've had it for, I think, well over seven or eight months. One thing to keep in mind is if you are using a set of IEMs or earphones with a microphone, this does not have a microphone pass through. So if this is connected to your device uh, and you do get a call, um, your IEMs or your earphones mic will not be used. It will straight away bypass to your phone's microphone. So it might help to hold your phone closer to your mouth when you're taking any calls. The one thing this does have is a little light over here that, that shines when you've plugged into a USB-C uh, device or you can even put an adapter onto this for lightning uh, or even USB-A. So this little light, basically what this tells you is when it lights up, it uh, shines different colors and it basically tells you what kind of uh, audio file you're listening to, whether it's uh, a, a smaller file or a DSD or so on and so forth. So uh, in, it includes MQA as well. So that's what the little light tells you. And this is more cut out for higher res audio than the Astral and Kern is for sure. Moving on to a sound front. I did plug in the Truthier Hola to both these DAC amps just to see what they're all about because I, I see a lot of people who have IEMs in that price range who want to go in for DAC amps in this price range. So well, it's it's interesting because I got to understand what a lot of people are saying because I have had a lot of people mention in my comments saying, I can't tell the difference between one or the other. It doesn't seem like there's much of a difference, if at all. So I did see where they're coming from because when I was doing a A-B testing between the Astral and Kern and the iFi Go Link, with the Hola, it, there's not much of a difference. It's There is a difference, but it is extremely minor. So I can see a lot of people not sitting and really spending time to see what the major differences are. But the one thing that this tells me is that the Truthia Hola is not as transparent as I thought it was. I mean, it is an entry-level set of IEMs. It is a terrific sounding set of IEMs. I quite like it. In fact, it's my current favorite in that entire price segment. But it is not transparent enough to tell you the significant difference between both of these DAC amps. So what I decided to do is decide to plug in the SimGot EM6L and EA1000 with the DAC amps as well, just to see if there's a difference because these two sets of IMs are quite transparent. Now, no doubt these are significantly more expensive than the Truthia Hola, but at least I know for a fact that these are significantly more transparent as well. 
So when I shifted over to the SimGuard IEMs, it was very clear that the Astral and Kern, as good as it is with detail, it just somehow is a little bit veiled compared to the iFi GoLink. Uh, it does a good job with pushing out uh, details for certain, but uh, it is not as enthusiastic about making sure there's crispness in in everything basically because it uh, it enunciates more focus on the mid-range than it does everything else whereas the iFi GoLink has better focus right through the entire frequency spectrum. I'd say on an amping front both of these are more or less similar but it, when it comes to the finer detail in your music listening uh, the iFi GoLink does trump it but uh, coming back to where they don't sound different at all is the Astral and Kern is kind of capped because it can do SPC, AAC and Aptex. So, uh, I think that caps it out at about 500 kbps, whereas the iFi, you can really use really high resolution audio. So, uh, if you've got files that uh, can play uh, 1 mbps or even 5 mbps, the iFi will do it uh, because there's no bottleneck really. The, the Aslan Kern's only bottleneck really is the fact that it is wireless. I'm pretty certain that if there were a way to use it in a wired manner, you could use uh, higher bitrate, but uh, it doesn't seem to have that. When it comes to listening to lower resolution music or SPC, AAC codecs or MP3 files, I think that both of these sound very similar. So if I'm listening to these via the Truthier Holas or any of the SimGot IEMs that I've tested them with, they sound very similar on an amping front and a detail front with the Aslan Kern sounding very slightly veiled. You, you, you can't really put in that much of focus to say that, oh my gosh, there's a big difference between the two. But uh, the main difference kicks in when you start playing high resolution audio and the iFi just takes over there because everything from the imaging, the, the staging, uh, the, the vocal separation, the instrument separation, everything from a lower frequency to a mid to a higher frequency just gets much better detail when it comes to its overall characteristics. You'll be able to focus in on a lot more details with the iFi compared to the Aslan Kern. The Aslan Kern does do well, I'd say, with a more budget set of IEMs like the Truthier Hola. Uh, I'd say it's a very good starter uh, DAC amp because um, it it does what it needs to do. Its stage is good enough. Its detail is good enough. Uh, it's, it's more a convenience than anything else, whereas uh, the iFi Go link is, well, you have to be tethered to it. You can't uh, sort of uh, be wireless uh, when, when it comes, or should I say, have your phone in another room while you're listening to this, while you're tethered to the Aslan Kern. So each one has its own advantages. So I see these two being used in very different situations, like how I've been using them, because I use the iFi Go link usually at my desk when I'm doing a lot of testing with IEMs. I also use it when, you know, I just want to forget the world and enjoy some music. Whereas the Astral and Kern, I use more in my car because I want to use a wireless system and I don't have all the CarPlay stuff and wireless stuff in my car. So this is a very convenient connect uh, to make my system wireless. And at the same time, it's not terrifically compromising when it comes to audio quality in the car. Um, no doubt, I mean, using a high res audio would be more fun, but uh, then the whole factor of road noise and wind noise come in. So I think the Astral and Kern works perfectly fine uh, in a in that kind of car environment and it's also very well suited towards budget IEMs because like I mentioned you can't really tell much of a difference between the iFi Go Link and the Aslan Kern when using something like a Truthier Hola. So uh, um, is the extra cost justified when it comes to spending on the iFi compared to the Aslan Kern? Well if you know for a fact that you're going to be listening to in-ear monitors that cost around 2000 to 3000 rupees uh, for a very long time, it makes sense to go for the Aslan Kern because that is value for money, it is convenience and you're not going to be able to tell because of the IEMs you're using, since they're not as transparent as some can be, the Aslan Kern is just fine. Whereas if you want to future-proof yourself where you want to or you know you're going to be listening to high-res music for certain or you're going to uh, start listening to uh, high-resolution audio whether with uh, Apple subscription or if you want to start buying high-res audio, uh, then the iFi to me makes a lot more sense because it unlocks a lot more potential. You can pair it with, I think, headphones up to 80 ohms. So even if you listen to headphones or IEMs, the iFi just feeds you that much more data. And that is the essence of wanting to enjoy your music that much more. It's, you'll be able to listen to a lot more details that, should I say, the artist intended because there's a lot more information that will come through. Whereas in the situation of having the Astral and Kern, you, you're, you're, you're sitting right with a bottleneck since it is wireless. The wired way is the absolute way to go, especially if you want 
all of the detail and all of the clarity and uh, uh, having a good DAC chip and AMP chip can make all the difference. And that, from my perspective, is the iFi Go Link. So these are your two options. It depends what kind of individual you are. It depends what kind of situation you're in to decide which one you want to go for. So uh, uh, moving on to how much these cost. Well, uh, at the time of recording this, of course, well, you can buy these from headphonezone.in. I, I will leave the links down below. Um, and I have noticed that they have an option of uh, EMIs. They, they do have EMI plans if you plan on buying either of these, uh, which is quite neat. So the pricing of the iFi Go Link, its maximum retail price is 5,999 rupees here in India. But you can get it for 3,999 at the time of recording this. The Astel and Kern XB10 has a maximum retail price of 14,999 but it has a selling price of 1799 so that's uh, well that is a significant difference because the aslan kern is less than half the price of uh, what the ifi is going for but again coming back to that whole thing of which one uh, do you think is for you or which one do you think you're going to use well honestly if you want to get into the audiophile hobby and you don't want to spend too much it makes sense to go for something like uh, a two-tier IEM and the Astel and Kern. Or if you don't want to get an Astel and Kern and you have a headphone jack, plug into it. No problem. You can use these, you know, it'll be no nonsense. It'll work. It'll work fine. Uh, the Astel and Kern will, you know, let you use the Aptex uh, codec with higher bitrate audio. Now, if you're not going to use higher bitrate audio, there's no point in even considering the iFi Go Link. Save your money, go for the Astel and Kern. Whereas if you know you want to get into the higher resolution audio of the, the, the entire hobby, uh, the iFi is the way to go because in that case your bottleneck will be the file you're playing and not the hardware. The hardware will not slow you down. It is the file entirely and you can always subscribe on to Apple's uh, music which is of course high-res audio and uh, if you do compare the two when you're doing high-res audio, I wouldn't say it's night and day because these are not exactly... It's not like I'm comparing a, a 3,000 or 4,000 uh, rupee DAC amp to a 80,000 rupee or something like that. It's, it's not, there's not that much of a difference. It's not night and day. There are subtle differences, uh, but the iFi is richer. The, the iFi is a little more enthusiastic with detail. It is a little more enthusiastic in the higher range. And it's, even the, the base is fuller. It has more body. The iFi is the way to go if you want something that... Uh, you don't want to spend too much money on and you want to be portable with. It's a terrific little unit uh, and I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you have the extra cash to spend on the iFi, I'd say it's definitely the way to go if you're okay being tethered to the dongle DAC as well as your phone. So there you have it. That's my take on both of these DAC amps. And if you do have any questions about them, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I, I try to get back to every comment if possible. Uh, but of course, I do hope that I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. And if you would like to support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.